What is going on guys, Kingpin Light here, and it's been a little while since I did my last video showing the Runic deck breakdown. This was pre some of the ban lists that came out, I think a couple of weeks after I made that video, uh, where they limited a lot of the Runic cards, um, as well as some of the other sort of support cards that were in the deck. So today we're going to kind of answer the question, is Runic, or at least as pure as we can get to Runic, uh, still viable in Master Duel? Um, of course, there's things like Runic uh, Stun, uh, other things going on, at, what is that called, at Emancipator or whatever, that whole deck. There's a bunch of different decks running around right now. Uh, not many people are playing pure Runic, or as le again, as, as close as we can get to pure Runic. Um, but I've had success with it. I'm still staying in Diamond, uh, Diamond 4, Diamond 3 sometimes. Um, and I'm going to show you what some of the changes that I did to the deck to keep it competitive still. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'll show some of the uh, the changes. I'll do a quicker rundown than I did on the last video since it's pretty much the same. All right, guys. So first off, I added Nibiru in here. So many decks right now that are running in sort of the meta of Master Duel are just going to require a lot of summons. Um, and so I have that in there again just to pad the count to get up to that 40. It's the only monster I have in my, uh, my entire uh, deck. And it kind of comes in handy a little bit sometimes where, uh, let me just read. Yeah, so things like Nightmare Phoenix require two monsters, right? And there's no way to get really two monsters unless your opponent is summoning something like a Lava Go Golem onto your side of the field or one of the Kaijus. Uh, this is one of the ways, right? So not only will Nibiru clean their uh, field out whenever you summon it, but it's also going to give you an extra body that you could potentially use for some of these tech options like Nightmare Phoenix. Um, other than that, you're not really running these anyway, right? It doesn't really matter to get these out. You're going to have an out in another way. So it's just there to pad the count and it's come in handy uh, a good bit of times. Also, if you have it in your hand and it's just a dead card because they're playing a deck that doesn't require that or you've already floodgated them a little bit, um, it's a perfect target for uh, when you bring out one of your Runic Wings or one of your uh, the Moon in right or uh hugin or whatever if you bring those out and you got to discard a card you're not going to lose much value if you get nibiru out and you already know it's a deck that's not going to be affected by it so yeah that's in there for that reason i threw in a harpy's feather duster because there's been a few times where there's a lot of decks that are just filling back row right now whether it's traps or just a bunch of quick spells of course this isn't going to cancel out any of the quick spells but usually they need the quick spells to be used at a certain very specific time in the in the phase so you can kind of get them out of phase or get them to uh you know bait out their cards um not just that it's also there's been a couple of times where i've been floodgated whether they had something that just sends everything out to the uh, banish zone instead of going to the graveyard that's hard out um if you don't already have you know uh, a destruction in your hand so i have it in there it's useful to have still have one terraformer we're down to two card demises, which is fine. We're down to two pot of... I think pot of duality was already at two, but we're, we got two of those. I have one pot of desires. Some people run more. I don't like running a lot of these because really you can only use one in a game, right? In a duel without uh, lo losing, really. Like if you banish 20 cards from your 40 card deck... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're going to easily win. You're probably going to out everything that you need you know in the banish 10 you can get away with i use it sparingly it's good to have when you're sort of in a corner but i try not to use it like on turn one or whatever uh, three runic fountains which are still allowed i am running messenger of peace this has probably won me a lot more games than i than i'd like to admit just having this out on the field man it just it really uh because it, it seems easy to out, you know what I mean? But a lot of people are going to be targeting things like Runic Fountain if they have, um, y you know, not, not necessarily Harpy's Feather Duster, but something that targets one of your spells or traps. They're probably going to get Runic Fountain or they're going to get one of these other trap floodgates before they hit Messenger of Peace. And now, something to note, Messenger of Peace is not very useful against Sprite decks because I'm pretty sure most of their monsters are under 1500, so they can still attack and, you know, bleed you out that way. So just something to note. Uh, one Runic Allure, it's sort of a win more type of card for me. Like, if you're if you're banishing enough from the top of their deck already, 
you're probably not going to win just based on runic allure but it is helpful toward the end of matches where you can no longer activate some of these effects let's say they have three cards left on the top of their deck um or you know two or three even like something like this right to destruction you have to banish the top four of their deck meaning if they have less than four whether it's three two or one you're not even going to be able to activate it meaning they have one two or three extra turns before they actually deck out unless you got runic lore you summon out a you know the second effect which is special summon a runic monster and that activates lore and you're already you keep banishing off the top and this does not need to have any cards in their deck or any specific amount left on their deck to be able to activate so it's just kind of good toward the end um, to close out the game so they left three runic tips untouched so we're running all three they left flashing fire untouched we're running all three they did limit uh runic destruction to two semi limit to two uh so we're running the max that we can same with freezing curses we're running the max that we can slumber same thing uh they left smiting storm untouched so we got three same for golden droplet we got three three dispellings and so that sort of makes up the bulk of the uh, the runic deck, right? Everything that we can have in the runic archetype is in this deck. So next up, we got a metaverse. I have considered removing this. Um, maybe for another, there can only be one. I'm leaving it for now. It's been helpful here and there. Sometimes if you don't get a terraforming or a, uh, a runic fountain on your first turn, it's just another copy of runic fountain, really, as long as it doesn't get negated. But... Uh, it's nothing wrong with running it. So we got one rivalry, rivalry of Warlords. I have found that this does not affect the meta much because most meta are running one of one type, right? We got cybers, we got all these different types. Um, and so they're really only running one type in most decks anyway. So this is more of a helpful thing if you have, there can only be one on the field already, which of course means that they can only control one monster of each type so if you have this on the field and then you have rival rivalry of warlords which means you can only control one type of monster it means they're locked into a single monster and a lot of times they're not going to have an out not many decks are running tributes uh tribute cards right they can i think they can link summon still off of it um but even then there's limited right whatever they bring out can generate another special summon because they're locked into that single monster and so if they don't have an out for the back row, that really, really, really stuns them. Especially if you got all of these different floodgates as well. Skill drain, right? We're running two of those. Toll Ike is the funniest card. Because uh, each player has to send one card from their hand to the graveyard every time they attack. And if they, ha if they don't have back row removal, it's just funny I have this. Because it does lock them out of... Uh, a lot of times it locks them out of being, being able to attack with their heavy monsters. They might have an OTK amount of damage on the field, and they can only attack with one or two of their monsters because they used up all their resources. Now, an important thing to note is you want to try and activate this as early in the enemy turn as you can. Because if you if they go straight to the battle phase, or if you don't activate it until the battle phase, they're going to uh, announce an attack, right? Announce, that's not the right word, but you guys know what I mean. They're going to initiate an attack onto you, either your monster or your, uh, your life points. And you can only activate this after the declaration of attack. Meaning it's not going to affect that first attack coming in. So let's say they attacked with, you know, whatever, Nibiru, right? They got the Nibiru on the, on the field. They attack with Nibiru. Um, you're going to activate Toll Hike. They're going to get the damage in. And then only the next attacks that they do are going to require that card to be sent from the hand to the graveyard. But if you get it working, it's yet another floodgate that just really limits their ability to play. Uh, so down here, we got three Hugans. Honestly, I need to change this to have three Munins. Um, and I'll show you which ones can be removed. I just... Oh, I messed up. Hold on. I just don't have the... Uh, the ultra rare tokens or whatever the hell um, right now. So I just haven't put it in there. I've been trying to build another deck that's like 60 cards without spending any real money on it. So I'm trying not to use any of my um, my shards or whatever they're called. So we got three Garys. Super useful, right? Can't be destroyed by uh, card effects. It can't be balanced. It can be, uh, you know what I mean, returned to, to the deck and all of that. But it can't be destroyed by card effects. 
and it allows you to get one of your runic founds back from the graveyard back to your hand all right next up we got gravity controller i think that's the only non runic monster in the extra deck that you can actually summon and what it does basically it just takes one of your fusion monsters that you had out there it takes its place gets put in the extra zone of course and can't be destroyed with any monster in the main monster zone uh, they, you still take damage, of course, and it's only a thousand, so you're probably gonna take a heavy bit of damage. But if an extra mo a zone monster, extra monster zone monster attacks this card, it gets sent back to the to the extra deck as well as this card. So, it, it's, I don't know. It, it can become useful, I guess. I just have it in there because one of the few cards that you can actually play, and it's got a potential to be used. I, personally, I haven't used it. I uh, haven't needed to use it. Um, we got Nightmare Phoenix, Dark the Dark Charmer, Gaia Saber, it's just there, and Nightmare Unicorn. Now, all of these uh, are there because they can potentially be summoned if, if the enemy puts something on your field and then you fusion summon one of these runic monsters, or if you get maybe the Nibiru on the field and then you fusion summon a monster. These are four you can get in there. Those can be replaced with anything you want. Sometimes they're used for if you need to discard some from the extra deck. And that these are valid targets because you're 99.9% .9 never going to see them come into play or even be able to summon them. They're just there to fill up the, the uh, extra deck count, really. Um, and one of these, I would probably remove Gaia Saber and put that extra Munin in there. So, yeah, guys, this is what I'm running now. As far as Runic, I'm running other decks. I just haven't had time to really prepare a video. Uh, breaking down how to play them i'm learning them myself a little bit and i'm playing a lot of other decks that just aren't competitive like I, i'm still trying to get uh, my favorite deck of all time what's it called uh medulce working again pure medulce is not working of course it's not very supported anymore and so i'm trying to figure out what it can go with to still be viable so anyway let's go ahead and just jump into some live battles hopefully we win some if we don't we don't but let's see how we really do with this deck all right guys and here we go we're gonna start off in diamond tier four and of course this deck likes to go first uh we'll see if we go first or second of course if i lose i'll drop down to diamond tier five and i'm gonna go second again i've been getting a lot of these seconds man i have not gotten lucky been able to go first but that's okay let's see what they're working with um 35 they're working with a 40 deck let's see it could be anything i got runic fountain which is really good golden droplet dispelling combo which i'll show in a second okay they're running that punk engine in there runic freezes could help me out in this case because i would run that put the fountain on after droplet dispelling get rid of one card from their hand and what would it be a total of seven out of their deck and then smiting storm to summon uh, Hugin probably but we'll have to see what board state they end up with um, okay instant contact Baron the Fleur that's fine I would probably put fountain let it use its quick effect that negates and destroys the card and then freeze it he's showing that sending it to the grave this Opponent's turn can pay 600 synchro summon one punk using monsters you control so he's got an on my turn Okay, well he doesn't have it now What is rising carp tribute this special summon up to two monsters uh, Which he's doing so I guess it doesn't matter what else he's about to do So we have an out for this bear in the floor, but we don't have an out For much more than that right now Oh, this doesn't cancel out the, the cost of LP. It just draws them one. Hmm. When you activate a punk card or effect that targets a card your opponent con your opponent controls. So as long as I don't have a monster on the field. Well, it does mean that he targets a lot. So maybe the best option would be to bring out Munin. I don't actually know what the pure punk deck that he's playing i have only ever seen the punk engine built into other decks so i've never seen it go this far i'm curious uh you can pay 600 take one monster from your deck add it to your hand and send it to the graveyard 
Uh, you can special this, summon this from the graveyard if I activate a card in response to a punk card. And this is target one control. Okay, okay. I'm trying to see what his end board is going to be because so far he's only got one negate with Baron to floor. Quick effect negate, of course, for anything, an Omni negate. But that's fine. I have an out for that. I'm just trying to figure out what other traps he's laying. He's getting rid of a lot from his both decks, really. It's 27 and 10. Uh, target. So that doesn't affect me. You can target one monster in your graveyard. Special summon it. Okay. That gives him more attack, which I don't care about. He's going to bring back something else. So I'm not worried about this guy. One negate from Baron to floor. That doesn't matter to me right now. And in fact, the more that he draws, the better off I am. Because I have less to get rid of from his deck. His material, that's a tuner three. You can't go with 11. So he would be three. I don't think he can do anything. I don't think he can. Hmm. I don't know what his back row could be. Yeah, the max is fine. I don't know what his back row could be, to be honest. I have a couple of plays. The riskiest, but probably best, is put Runic Fountain down. Freezing Curses Baron. But if he's got any negates in the back row, I'm kind of... You know. But then I, I... You know what? We'll do that. Because if Runic Fountain gets destroyed, I'll bring out my Gary. I'll bring that back into my hand. And I still got my Droplet Dispelling play. So let's go ahead and Fountain. Let that the floor do something or he might actually wait until I utilize the floor or I'm sorry until I utilize the fountain draw effect and then he'll try to destroy it so I'm gonna save the freezing curses in my hand does this target yes oh no no the initial one does this does not target okay so then next, I will, I need this to summon Gary or Mune, or Hugin. I need that to cancel out this effect. I'm going to Golden Droplet. We'll see if it goes through. He could have an Ash, I guess. All right, we got rid of his Cosmic Cyclone. With that, I will, he might want to get rid of that one. We got rid of one of his ashes, two random punks, another instant contact, and one of his cosmic cyclones. He's got 22 left in his deck. We'll dispel it, see what happens. He's going to let it go through. Cool. We're left with... Hmm. I'm going to activate it because it's probably going to set off his uh, the floor. And I want to save something for next turn that's fine well actually no because oh yeah that is fine that's fine ah oh, he did have something and it banishes it no hmm Hmm. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon uh, Hugin. Yep, finally it comes out. I will negate that. Works for me. This does not work for me. God damn it. Banish it is not destruction, so Hugin's not going to protect it. If I bring out Hugin, I don't have a set card. Or face up. That was a waste of a card. It's not going to. It's not going to negate my runic freezing curses. That's fine. I 
All right, so this targets. Oh man, I could do. So what I can do is I can bring Hugin out, drop my smiting storm, get another copy of fountain, but then I have no defense other than a single Hugin block. Um, and I'm just hoping that I get a, that I don't get OTK, but I'm also hoping to get a runic card next. Or I could do Gary. He won't be destroyed by Baron the Floor's ability. And then I'll destroy one. Or I could hope that Munin, because that negates the... What do I do here? I'm bringing out Gary. That's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but... It is what it is. At least this won't get destroyed by its effect. And I will end. I'm not going to put Smiting Storm down because it will be able to be destroyed by Baron the Floor. And he's down to 16 in his deck. He's got rid of two of these Ogre Dance cards. Has he used one already? He has not. So he's got a potential of having a third. Gotten rid of a couple copies. One, two... Hmm. There's a lot of punk cards, isn't there? I got rid of his other Cosmic Cyclone. He could have three. I don't really care about Called by the Grave. One, two of his Ashes. Two Ashes, he's probably got a third. And then he could potentially have another Cosmic Cyclone. So we'll see. Alright, that's going to mill another one from his deck. Not really milling, but he's getting it out of his deck. So that's good. He's down to 14. I mean, he could conceivably OTK. He will need a thousand attacker. He'll probably use this punk Sharakusei to attack. I will destroy this one. That still leaves 3,600 and plus whatever else he, he drops this turn. So, not good. Not good at all. But, you know, man, sometimes this happens. Sometimes you end up with a matchup. Not the best hand. I started with a pretty damn good hand, though. He just... He caught me off guard with that Cosmic Cyclone. I don't have a good out for Cosmic Cyclone unless I already have Munin out. Or whatever that card is. It's Munin, right? <clears throat> unless I already have Munin out that... So, the card needs to already be out before they activate a card that targets... Because if they activate it, target, and then I respond with Munin coming out, it's not going to count as a card being targeted. Oh, yeah, OTK. Well, that was fun. First game is a loss. We'll, we'll let him work it out. I'm not going to scoop. Good job, guy. Good job. I've never seen a pure punk uh pure punk deck so that was fun and we're off let's see what this second battle looks like we have going first cool against femtose femtosai and we are in diamond five of course tier five i dropped from tier four from that last loss but that is okay not a great hand not a great hand at all. Destruction out, Hugin. Get rid of Card of Demise. Well, Card of Demise could be used to bring us back. But I'd, I'd kind of want to keep Rivalry of Warlords. We don't know what he's running, but he's got a lot of cards in his deck. Oh, come on. He's got a 60-card deck. No way he got Ash on the first draw. On the first hand. He did! ridiculous that's okay we'll uh we'll put down rivalry of warlords skill drain if this gets destroyed we'll bring out smiting storm to bring out another hugan next turn and hopefully have another card in hand but we will have to wait yet another turn to be able to use it i guess i could have kept um 
Rivalry of Warlords in my hand to discard for the next Hugin. That might have been a better play. But just with a 60 card deck, it's possible, but it's also highly likely that he's not just running one type. So we're doing it to be safe. And then, of course, we're going to skill drain him. If it's rock, I'd like not to hmm, plant. It's very likely he could be running a full plant. Let's just run Rivalry of Warlords. Choosing this card in the field and a monster from your hand, field and all monsters with a predator counter. Your... So he's going to be able to fusion summon, which is fine. Because hopefully it'll be something I can skill drain and it'll just be a big body. Oh, he's got a Despia, a branded. That's fine. What's he going to discard? Fusion, while this card's in your graveyard, banish this card and target one card on the field, destroy it. I see. So he does have to pick one. What's he going to pick? What is he going to pick? Fairy was picked. Okay. Skill drain it. And this needs to have a fusion dark monster. So he can't, he probably has something else in his hand, but he can't just off of this fairy, of this Aluber. And he ends his turn, that's good. But we have to be careful because he's gonna be able to return or destroy one of my cards. Oh, perfect. If he's got another Ashman, best player ever, as they say. So let's go ahead and add Please, please, please go through. I need it. Yes, it went through. So we're going to get us Runic Fountain. We got rid of his Called by the Grave. Let's bring out the Runic Fountain. And we'll just run off Running Smite. Banish one. Got rid of his Destiny Dasher. Activate it. Bring three back. And we know he can't negate it. Bring out three. Uh, we can run Runic Golden Droplet and Dispel, or we could save it for next turn, which is probably the safest. We're going to keep this for now. Um, and let's go ahead and run to the next turn. So we're, We've locked them into fairies, at least. But there's a lot of fairies. So what we're going to hope is that he doesn't have another fairy just yet. We're going to run Golden Droplet as soon as we get out of the draw phase. Then we're going to Dispel and hope we hit a fairy if he's got one. But he's got 50 cards in his deck, which is going to be a lot to get through. So, come on. Alright, change to attack. That does not trigger me being able to do a quick effect, unfortunately. <clears throat> but that's okay. Oh, there we go. So, how does that not trigger it? I'm so confused. Sometimes... We locked him. We locked him, so... Alright, guys. Let's do one more since that was a really short one. And third match. I actually recorded a last match, but it was a scoop from them. I won it, but it was a scoop and didn't feel like showing that, so I deleted that footage. So, all right. Let's see. Exo Sister Packs. He's going to have an Exo Sisters. This is an okay starting hand. I got Freezing Curses because they a lot of their effects have, like, Xyz summon on, your, on the opponent's turn, right? So maybe I can stop that from happening. Runic Lore, I mean, again, this isn't a super important card. I'll put it down. I'll see if I need Card of Demise. I may end up needing it. So I won't special summon, like, right off the bat or anything like that. Oh. He's going to be able to stop my Runic Fountain with this. Because what he does is he shuffles the three cards that I target in the graveyard back to my deck. Which means I can't activate Runic Fountain. I get no hand um, advantage. Oh, man. I think the resounding answer is this deck still viable. The answer is kind of. Um, I think you really do have to run a lot of things like Sprite Stun, Runic, Runic Sprite Stun or something like that instead of a pure Runic deck, which is becoming increasingly obsolete as time goes on. 
um it's still really fun to play to be honest with you i just i enjoy seeing the number go down from the top of their deck slowly um but you know oh he got rid of this that's good so what can this guy do nothing on my turn so that's fine this one can quick effect target one card your opponent controls okay never mind he got rid of it once per turn quick effect you can detach one material from this card banish one card your opponent controls and your opponent activates a card or effect you can return one x fees monster you own attached okay. that's fine so what i'm going to do is runic destruction well i'm going to put runic lower down runic destruction hopefully i hit something worth hitting I'm going to pick this back right one. Then he's probably going to activate this effect. If he doesn't, then I don't know what to do. Okay. Oh, man. Well, I did get rid of one of his dimension armament that doesn't really matter i'm gonna bring out yeah i'm gonna try and bring out hugan uh get rid of card of demise for it he might trigger that i'll use freezing curses the only question is does he have something to negate my does he have an ash and then what's this back row Get rid of card of demise. Okay. Let's me get this runic fountain. That gets rid of his small world. Not super useful. I'll put runic fountain down. He might be able to. Oh, he's got. Oh, he didn't get rid of it. Cool. So I will runic golden droplet it. One, two, three. He might be able to stop it though. Yeah, because he's got two that he can do. I'm going to let it happen. There we go. I needed this. I needed that so much. I needed him to trigger that one. I thought he wasn't going to. Now I can negate it. Negate both of his effects. Please don't have an out in back row. I think this should go through though. No! No. Okay. Well. Oh, but he's going to get rid of Exo Sisters. Oh. Oh, wow. That was a big chain, huh? I'm losing, though. I'm probably losing. Bam. Bam. Runic Allure, and it's going to trigger, I think, one more time. They get rid of two of his Returnias, one of his Vadis, and another Sophia, or just the first Sophia, I guess. What do I do, though, now? What do I do here? I don't... <laughs> I think I lost, man. I have nothing I can do. I'm just going to wait see what he does hope he doesn't OTK me hmm. banish a card what's he gonna banish yep straight damage straight damage oh well okay unfortunately I don't have 
a one card out. Just barely. Right? Just barely, yep. This was a close call, man, but it's a loss for me. That that six chain that we had, man, if you didn't have that back that exact card in the back, man, we could have maybe won this. Yeah. Not much I can do with this, so not a single thing I can do with this. But let's just let's just do the best that we can. And he max seizes me. Nice. We're gonna bring out Gary. Just whatever. It can still be bounced. We'll at least take out one of theirs on the way out. Get rid of one more card. Yeah. GG's Kanji Man. I don't know how to read it, so I don't know what his name is, but GG's. I wish there was a GG button, you know what I mean? Like, I understand why they don't have text, especially when it's supposed to be family friendly, so it's got kids playing, you don't want to see a bunch of random text, right? But, what do we destroy? I'm going to destroy this guy. Just for the heck of it. Hmm. So that's officially two losses and one win, and the win was from a scoop, so. Yeah, guys. As you can see, that's how the deck works. Doesn't do very well in Diamond. Now, I will say that I did climb to Diamond um, Tier 3 and 4 using this exact deck. So it could have been bad matchups right now, or it could be that the deck loses power once it hits Diamond, and you're playing against those decks. Um, it, I think it still does very well in, in Platinum, Gold, and, and so on, right? Uh, just something to note, but as you could see, there's a lot of outs for this Runic deck now. There's probably ways to make this deck better, and I don't... Uh, I, obviously, I believe the engine, the Runic engine, can work alongside a ton of different decks um, as just an internal engine and not the main focus. Uh, but the point of this video and the point of this deck is to showcase how a pure runic deck does in the meta now, at least in Master Duel. Um, but yeah, guys, if you like that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Funny enough, I'm working on my own personal, like, created by me trading card game, sort of. It's hard to explain, but uh, as I move for further along in that process, I'm going to probably showcase a little bit of the cards and some of the effects and, and rules that I'm coming up with. Um, if you guys are interested in that, I'll have it as, as like a side playlist, not my main playlist on this channel. Um, and yeah, if you want to see more of me reacting to random stuff, it's not really related to card games. Check out my main channel. We're about to hit 4,000 subscribers on that one. This one's obviously much smaller. I'm at around under 100 when I'm recording this video. I think I'm at 50. Um, but we're going to focus a lot more on trading card games or just projects that I'm working on. So it's my side channel. I'm not going to put as much um, time into it. So videos will come not on a schedule just when I make them. So yeah, and if you guys want, suggest some decks for me to try out. Maybe I'll do some videos on it or do a unique spin on creating that deck so I'm not copying like a deck list and just something that I could see is being used. Uh, and hope you guys have a good rest of your day and uh, keep on dueling, guys.